Hello everyone, welcome back to DCS World, where I decided to do a two-week free trial of the De Havilland Mosquito and found that it was rather hard to take off with it. Uh, prior to the recording of this video, I had uh, set up the controls, of course, and I decided to try it out once and did not leave the ground. So this video will represent the first time I actually successfully left the ground with it. I exploded in a whole bunch of flames on the first try prior to this. Now, I had a little bit of a problem with my throttle axis, where each axis is a different engine and one of them was working right but the other one for some reason uh, only got to halfway even at the top of the range and suddenly jumps to 100 percent uh, you can sort of see what it's doing right there on the axis tune panel so one was operating right the other wasn't but i decided to run with it there's the side tech uh, throttle quadrant I don't know why I was doing that. This is the first time I've seen that behavior. I didn't adjust the curve to try and compensate for that because I expected that maybe a restart would solve the problem. But anyway, just be aware that I'm having a little bit of a trouble with the throttles there. But I watched some videos after exploding in flames, of course, I watched some videos and they recommended a little bit more a nose trim down. So here I'm looking at the nose trim, making sure it's down. And my preferred way to maintain stability on the ground is rudder trim. So I adjusted the rudder trim a bit so that it was about halfway uh, on the starboard side. So that would compensate. And I'm holding the wheel brakes down and getting both engines to the same boost level, which I think I got at 12 before that one throttle would suddenly jump it to the maximum. And for some reason, while I was trying to take off here, some helicopters, I think those were Apaches, uh, decided to make things more interesting for me. Uh, somewhat distracting, but yeah. Uh, so here, I'm at least holding it on the runway. Before, uh, basically I did a whole bunch of loops on the ground and then tipped over. So, uh, the videos helped. I'm uh, glad for all the people who did videos on the Mosquito. Uh, I did not catch everything because I listened to them while setting up my controls. Uh, a little bit after finding out what was wrong with things. And here it is, indications that I might leave the ground, but ultimately I decided I was rather heavy. Uh, I did an autogen mission and just went with that, so it's just just a generated mission with uh, good weather, of course, and I ended up upside down. So uh, what I decided to do was lighten things up a little bit because it felt like it was hard to leave the ground. I'm sure with a little bit more practice I could manage it, but I edited the generated mission so that, well, we have to click our plane there and we reduce the load. So I went with an empty load and just half fuel. And I felt that that would be easier while I'm still practicing takeoff to actually leave the ground with. And it turns out that I was right about that. So another thing I decided to change was I had uh, reshade on. And so that's the look of the plane on the outside. It's, uh, it's good. I mean, I don't know, the shader, I I'll have to tweak. I I'd like a different sort of look to it overall, but uh, for now it was fine. And of course the cockpit is very good. And here we go. The videos recommended uh, running up the left engine first. That was mainly for the yaw issue, but because both engines spin the same way, they're not counter-rotating, so they don't maintain balance like that. They're a pain in the rear end to keep stable in general. And while I'm taking off, because the rudder doesn't get enough air over it until about 60 knots, uh, I'm using wheel brakes occasionally to sort of use differential braking in order to hold things steady. Uh, there are other ways of doing it. You could use the throttle, but uh, with my throttle situation being the way it is, I decided I wouldn't use throttle to try and keep things steady. I would just use the wheel brakes occasionally until we got to 60 knots. So, or a little over 60 miles an hour on the speed dial. So, some hopping here, not great, but I this is the first time I managed to leave the ground successfully with the plane. So, there we go. Uh, I have uh, taken off. Now now I encounter a different problem. I uh, didn't know the mapping. For, I, I ultimately concluded that there was a gear lock. Uh, and I ultimately checked there uh, that there is a lock on the gear. And so you have to do left 
control left shift G in order to unlock it, but I didn't get the gear up uh, when I wanted to basically. And anyway, I left it down. I decided I would just try and land instead of trying to bring it up at this point. Uh, of course, uh, turning when you're barely above the stall speed isn't the best thing. But yeah, but worth noting that uh, it's under undercarriage for this plane rather than landing gear. I wish they were consistent about naming the features, but you know, of course it was called the undercarriage, so there we are. And here I am lining up the runway and seeing what I can do about landing. Of course, uh, I don't have high hopes at this point. I just took off rather sloppily for the first time. But we do get lined up and we aren't going very fast. I don't have flaps down. Flaps also have a lock on them. So you have to disengage that lock first before trying to deploy them. And but since we weren't going that fast, I didn't, and I'm not that heavy either, I didn't think it was going to be too big a deal to land without flaps. Since I didn't know exactly how much drag the flaps would do. Obviously, I'm having trouble keeping it on the runway. Uh, alas. Uh, e e e but considering what could have happened on my first attempt to land on it, uh, with it, uh, I, I decided that wasn't too bad. So, off I go. And now taxiing. Taxiing is another bit of fun because, again, differential wheel brakes and things are still trying to attack me, apparently. But the thing is, I'm using W for the wheel brakes. And one video suggested mapping the brakes on an axis so that it wasn't just on or off, like it had pressure sensitivity, because sometimes pressing W, it sort of does too much. As you can see there, I veered off because, and you know, you use a little bit of the yaw control, which I have as the twist axis on my stick. So I don't have rudder pedals or anything like that. That would make it easier. But, uh, well, there's the wheel brakes again. Uh, yeah, and it'll be all sorts of fun. Well, I'm already configured for takeoff. I've got the pitch trimmed the way I wanted and the rudder trimmed the way I wanted. So I just spun up the engines again while holding the brakes down, trying to get the boost to 12 and 3000 RPM. But again, the right engine axis is the one that's iffy. And so you can see sometimes it uh, jumps to the 100% and here we go. Let's try this again. Will this takeoff be any smoother than last time? I think I'm holding it on the runway better. Progress, potentially. Okay, and we're off. So this time I do control shift G to uh, unlock the gear and then bring it up. And of course I ultimately check outside to make sure it actually happens and yeah, of course there are indicator lights and all that but you never know when things break. So visual confirmation and I proceed on sort of a lap around, a pseudo traffic pattern. Uh, you can see it sort of deviates and wobbles a little bit as I turn here, or there's a little bit of a slip, but that's good. I mean, that's something I sort of miss with the flight sim planes. They are too stiff, whereas the DCS world planes, they, they sort of uh, wobble a little bit and have some slight side slip issues sometimes. Now, I noticed that the, there are undercarriage warnings if you throttle too far down. I'm not entirely sure what the parameters are. I haven't read the manual yet, sorry. Uh, but uh, yeah, so throttling too far down yields uh, undercarriage warning. But I did want to slow down, so I just dealt with the warning and went with it. And after enjoying the view around the hills for a little bit, I came in for a landing. And so landing gear down, and I decided to deploy the flaps as well this time. And uh, primarily just to slow down. Really. Yeah, they are so extreme, they act like air brakes more than anything else. And here we go. Uh, trying to feel it out here, but maybe partly because of the flaps, uh, I end up hopping a little bit. I try and throw down. Touchdown is a little hop, and I'm no longer on the center line. Uh, 
Yeah. And ultimately, I sort of spin out in not a great way, but it survives. It survives that. At least it's not a bundle of flames at the end of that, and I could conceivably continue here. Well, at least if I hadn't gone an external view and gone like that. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, pumping the brakes. Uh, yeah, putting the wheel brakes on some axis might be a good idea, but I just don't have one free. I'm having trouble enough with the ones that I do have. So, yeah. But, yeah, suppressing W uh, does seem a little bit forceful sometimes, and I have to get a feel for that. But, of course, I could just uh, press it multiple times, sort of pump it gently and that might work out a little bit better. So that was my first flights with the Mosquito and went about as well as one might expect. Uh, I will need more practice. I don't know if two weeks is enough, but we'll see what time I have and what I can get done with it before my uh, free stint with it ends. I don't really intend on getting World War II planes for DCS World, at least not yet. I have too many jets that I still need to work on, but they are nifty, and of course the additional realism in DCS world uh, yields situations like this, and of course the more interesting takeoffs and landings than in other sims. So I'll keep working on it, and with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I will see you next time.